Hey guys, I say welcome back, but this isn't a live it up. This is uh, got you ready. There you go. I don't. This is a uh, whether well, it's one of my on the road with the wolves by howls, kind of like the howls. The howls are usually short. This is going to be more of a conversation. I'm just gonna sit there in the see I'm trying to be nice to my fellow man but I I am probably I wouldn't say I'm a sucker because you know one's born every minute and I try to think before I react to things and <clears throat> I'm trying to just jump on the bandwagon on some things. Um, I'm not saying that I do my due diligence and I research things before, which you should, but like I, I don't usually make strong enough opinions about something that it requires that much looking into it. It's like, if I'm against it, there's usually a reason. And I pretty much made up my mind about it. If it's a big thing, it's usually something that I'll tolerate because it doesn't affect me. Um, oh my goodness. So, but I try to take, I try to be good, you know? Um, dealing with your fellow human beings is important. I mean, just being a dick. But like, this is, this is me, and I'm probably outing myself as gullible. One, I, I, uh, I, I can, it's not, it's not falling in love, but I can just love somebody with like, look at that music, I just love the hell out of you, you're awesome, you know, but it's, it's, it's an appreciation kind of love, um, I don't lust that often anymore, and I think it's just me getting old, but, uh, I, I, I make friends I can I ease into a friendship but like if, it, if I see red flags I ease my way out you know uh, you stop hearing from me and we weren't like not really best of buds uh, uh, you probably give me a reason to not want to talk to you um responding to something that I said in a negative way that it's kind of like mm, or or if or if you say like you know I don't mean to be an asshole but too many times you mean to be an asshole you just 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 come out and say it but it's very it's very difficult to make really good friends because I I creep in you know um and I try to te treat everyone with a bit of respect unless you're shitty to me um there are some people that I know personally who are good people who respond to things very abruptly and get offended pretty easy whenever the response that or the interaction they get is negative even in a very slight way uh you know and the problem is that I've noticed that when you have a negative attitude, this is this is the, this is where I get close to something that I don't like. Is that if you have a negative attitude, you go in a negative way into the people, you're going to meet the negative things. It's like you've already wound yourself up. You're either going to overreact to something, or somebody's generally going to do something shitty to you that you're going to get mad. And other people around you're going to see that. Your intentions are visible in your face, you are the way you act, and if you're going to nitpick about whether you're mad or angry or upset, then you're still in a negative headspace. <laughs> anyway, but if you approach things with a general positive, you don't have to be bubbly. But do a sort of general, I'm getting through this and moving on to something else. I know this is going to be fine. It's going to be fine. And then it hits you. And it's not. It's not good. It's not fine. And it's not negative. Nobody's hating on you. 
but you keep hitting the damn wall and then you start getting negative and you try and you try really hard to be good I had that happen today and I think getting having that negative made me just go you know what I'm just gonna be positive and you have to to a certain extent I had a, I had a vehicle I was trying to program for this very very nice lady and I could not get I, I got one she wanted two keys I got two, one key to program in I couldn't get a second one to program in and it was it was very terrible it took me an hour um, I got the actual transponder to crank the vehicle programmed in but the remote part is a separate program method and I couldn't get the program in come to find out there's a Japanese and a US version the chips are the same but the remotes are different so I swapped out the remote part so for both of them but only one program did I thought oh wait maybe I'm hitting a limit there's only so many you can put in the vehicle and I'm going back and forth and back and forth batteries checking wrong one try a different one back and forth and this lady is just she had parked further away from the shop she was so upset she's like I'm so sorry you can move my vehicle if you need to and I'm like no her seat didn't pull up and it didn't pull back so here I am, short lady, I'm trying to get in to like, do it. I'm a big guy, I know that, I'm already, you know, and she's like, oh, I'm sitting on the edge, just chilling, and she comes up and she gives me a tip. I, I don't know what it was, she handed me some money, I, I just put it in my, I, I said, no, no, I don't, it's fine, she's like, no, you take this, you're working real hard, and I'm just like, okay, thank you so much, it's in my pocket, I can only program one in, so I ordered her another one, it's going to come in. Uh, she only paid for one. All she's going to have to do is uh, she's going to come back by another remote. No programming, just the remote itself. And we'll program and we'll program it in for free. Because <laughs> technically what I'm going to do is when I get the new one in, I'm going to get the remote. I'm going to try to program the remote in. If it works, taking that remote out. I kept the other key the programmed in. So, so I have a key that works. It's physically cut. The chip is programmed in. I just need to put a remote in. It works. Anyway, I was just drenched in sweat. It's humid. It's hot. And uh, I'm hoping that's not too loud for y'all. I'm trying to be louder. But, uh, yeah. Anyway. So, that. And then after that, like, you know what? I'm going home. I go, I head home. I go to the grocery store. And I start picking out some stuff. Different foods. Just a few, few small things. Nothing major. Not my normal grocery trip. Just some tiny things. And I get it. And I go up in there. And then the lady behind the cashier very nice person uh, they told me the last time I was in that they were just trying to get through the day to get through the month to get to the, the beginning of the year because they had to find the school they needed they're trying to get into to uh, work as uh, a uh, uh, mortician or whatever the yeah I think it's mortician you know, that she wanted to work at uh, funeral homes and you know, take care of their bodies and stuff. <laughs> and people are like, normally when I say that to people, they're all like, oh, that's just, that's just, mm, I could do that. And I was like, no, it doesn't, it doesn't bother me at all. That's fine. And um, there's a movie that I had watched called Departures. It's a Japanese film. It's really good if you guys get a chance. Um, it shows how the Japanese deal with the dead and death and how they feel about people who work in that field. Because dead bodies are very <sighs> death is like, it, like touching a dead body is it's not necessarily like, more like a tape but it's just you're, it just seems they treat you like you're dirty um, and it's honoring the dead is what the these it's not they don't they prep the dead body make them clean put makeup get them set up um, so that you know they can be viewed uh, at the funerals I mean they can be viewed um, before they're put into uh, the crematorium uh, where they're cremated and uh, yeah uh, they're supposed to the, their makeup is really really good they do what they clean the body they dress the, the body and they do it all in front of the family while keeping the body covered anyway people are just like, like, it's a really good movie, 
and I thought that it would be culturally something she could be, she might be interested in since she's planning on doing something similar. Not necessarily totally similar, but you know what I mean. Nope. Nothing in the mailbox. Nobody loves me. I need to set up a P.O. box, actually. If I ever get big enough in the field of YouTube, depending on how long I stick with it, um, I may need to, I may do like, I may do something like that so that it's like, hey, you guys can send me stuff. You know? <laughs> Probably not. But anyway. So yeah, I did that, and as I was, and she thanked me for that, and so I left, and I was taking my groceries out, and I go to the groceries, I get I get the other groceries, put them in the car, and I notice that there's a pack of strawberry watermelon body armors in um, the, uh, in a small buggy, and I thought about it, and I was just like, I like this, these are my favorites, or not, well, some of my favorites, my favorite flavor. No, I picked it up, brought it inside, they were kind of coolish, but not fully cold, like they had been in the fridge, but they have been sitting out there for a little bit, not too long. So I brought them in, set them down, and told the lady, hey, these were sitting outside. I mean, they're in, the, in a buggy, so if somebody comes back, she, she thanked me, and I came outside. And I was thinking to myself, what would it take for me to have taken those home? Or or what would I have taken home? Like, if I saw, if I found, like, a $100 bill out, out, in the, out in the road, I'd probably pick it up. I'd probably end up going inside and being like, hey... Somebody may have dropped this. Might, might hold on to it. And I was like, "Well, what would I mean, like ten bucks? Yeah, I'd probably pocket that. I'm not. I'm not gonna lie. Um, I look around, pick it up, ten bucks. That's what I'd do. But fifty? Eh, I don't know. That that would that'd be a weird one. I don't know. I'd probably end up taking it in. Um, but anything more or like a wallet or like a big bag of money. I ended up taking in and being like, hey, you know, not because of some finest fee, because it's the right fucking thing to do. Um, and, uh, yeah, I didn't, and, and, and maybe that's just me, you know, and the thing is, is I've, I've known people who have like, yeah, I found a wallet, didn't have a driver's license, no IDs in it. There was like a, a couple of like business cards for restaurants and stuff, you know, and then like there was 20 bucks. I kept the 20 bucks. That's not going to piss me off if a friend of mine does something like that. <laughs> and it doesn't matter. That's you. Uh, I knew somebody that found a, a money bag or whatever and had a couple, couple thousand dollars in it. And it had a bank thing on it. So he went, got it, took it to the bank, and uh, they gave him 50 bucks. You know? Or maybe the, the owner had come up and found it and gave him 50 bucks. Or anyway, so there was a reward for it. It was nice. You know, he did, he's like, yeah, that's awesome. Thank you. But I don't know. I probably wouldn't. And that's just, that's just my personality. And I'm not going to say like, if I need to say, Hey, I just found this thousand dollars shit in, a, in an envelope. Uh, and I was like, mm, that's depending on how it's done. It might be drug money, huh? But eh, that's you do your thing, you know? Um, but that's, that's not for me. Um, unless, like I said, unless I'm like, if I'm at my property, I'm walking around my property and I find a fucking envelope full of like money. Take that envelope, take it back to the house. I'll probably keep it in the house in a spot for a little bit. If nobody comes knocking on my door, give it about two weeks. Probably going to deposit that shit. Just saying. Unless it just seems really weird and it's a lot of money, then I might go to the cops and be like, hey, you know what I mean? Situationally. But I don't know. I was thinking about that and I was just like, you know, it's nice to kind of. It's like you're you're not helping yourself, but you're trying to help somebody else. And I was like, my my brain kind of fluctuates on the altruism thing, like whether or not we can be altruistic. Because a lot of the times, um, there's the con. People will say, no, nobody, everybody always does something. It's always selfish. You're always being selfish. You know, you do something nice. It's just for the endorphins you get for being nice. You know, you be nice to somebody, and they like you, makes you feel good. And whether you get anything out of it, monetarily, physically, whatever, you know you did something that you feel is right, and it made you feel good, so that's why you did it. That It totally blows altruism out of the water if that's how you think. Um, 
I think I do things because somebody else wants it and I can do it for them. If I can't, then I can't. And I feel bad that I can't. So if it's okay for me to like go, oh, geez, I can't. I'm sorry. Then it should be okay for me to go, you know what? I can help you out and I feel glad that I can do it. Because I'm the one expending my time and energy. And I think you should be able to give yourself a little bit of a pat on the back whenever you normally do that. So fuck the naysayers, you know? Um, I don't mean just go out and just get run over, you know, but if you can help somebody and it's not going to harm you, why not, you know? Um, and if like, if you don't do it, you're going to benefit, do what you're going to do. Um, I'm probably not, um, it's like, and it's like also like life changing stuff. If it's something that's going to be negative and it's like, don't even get me, don't even get me started on the train on the tracks thing. You know, you got the two tracks, one train, left or right, it's going to kill an old man or a young kid. Um, yeah, I mean, I, one, the train's already, it should be paying attention and already trying to stop, you know, but it's not going to stop in time. I get that. But it's just like, you know what? Mm -mm. I don't know. I don't know if I can, if I can do the, the whole switch thing, you know, like figure out which one to, you know, to save <sighs> that dilemma is kind of difficult, <clears throat> but you do what you can, you know? So anyway, bugs, it's humid out. So anyway, I don't know. I just wanted to talk about that. I wanted to get that off my chest and, and say some stuff about that. Cause I think that it's, it, it, it is good to, to just kind of do right by everybody around you, whether you're, you're helping yourself or not. doesn't mean you have to go out of your way and just just destroy your energy. But sometimes like I wanted to make sure that lady had that remote. I, I I tried. I had one good working one cranking and remote working. She's good. She has two keys. It's better than not having any keys at all. But man, that was a that was no joke, really difficult. And just yeah, very frustrating. Anyway. Alright. Yeah, so that's me. That's that's my thing. So anyway, as always, I'm Sir Drinksel, and I'm wishing you health, wealth, and love with enough time and gusto to enjoy it all down to the last drop. I look like I'm wearing lipstick. Some red is my shirt here. What What is up with that? Well, look at those lips. Mm. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm, I shouldn't. I've always had uh, very nice lips. <laughs> Anyway, I hope you guys are doing well. As always, I'm sure drinks a lot, and I'm wishing you health, love, and love with the time. And get so to enjoy it all down to the last drop. I know it's not a lap it up, but hey, that's my outro. Bye, guys. Catch you later.